Hey, Wraith Designs here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to do a normal map bake in 3ds Max. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible and try to cover everything that I need to cover in this video. Uh, but this video will start off kind of, you know, assuming that you have enough knowledge uh, to get to this point. And if there's any questions about normal maps that you need to learn, uh, just look on YouTube or Google, um, and they'll explain a little bit more how these things actually work. For now, what I'm going to show you is how to bake them um, and how to use the projection modifier to create them and project them onto a low poly mesh. Uh, what I'm also going to do is show you how to create uh, an ambient occlusion bake as well and project that to a low poly mesh so that it kind of works in tandem with your normal map, which I know some people will be like, well, how do I create an ambient occlusion uh, for the normal map so that it looks a little bit more realistic than just the normal map itself? And a lot of people don't realize you can do this. Uh, so as you see in front of you, you've got two models here. One's a low poly and one's a high poly. Um, so let me just move them and you'll see the difference. So I did pretty much a simple, you know, like a wall piece here that you might, you know, randomly use for like a sci-fi uh, environment or a futuristic environment. Maybe this is like a transporter or pad or something like that. And basically, in essence, the whole point of having normal maps is to create an uh, illusion of 3D and projecting it onto a low poly mesh. And this will help with optimizing of your, you know, 3D meshes, um, assets, and your levels. So this way you can actually create more and have less of a uh, performance hit rather than putting in, you know, a high, high polygon mesh. And then after a while, if you like, say you're copying this multiple times, um, it's going to create a noticeable impact. So this is done for engines like Unreal Development Kit, UDK, uh, Unreal Engine 3, um, Unreal Engine 4, you know, I'm not exactly sure which Unity and above, but I know that they do it in Unity now. Uh, but this is basically after uh, the times of vertex lighting for like Unreal Engine 2, 2.5 and stuff before that, uh, they use vertex lighting. And they didn't really have a need to use normal maps then, or at least they didn't use them in the sense that we use them now. Uh, so I'm about to show you how to do that. So first off, you want to make sure that both of these are in the same space that they're occupying the same space because you need to use the projection modifier and the cage that comes with that to envelop both of these models properly so i'm going to go up here real quick um let me get to the normal editor and we're going to make sure both of these are you know have no detail on it you want to cover them the same material real quick here and then we're going to make sure that they're both occupying the same space Another thing you want to make sure is that your low poly UVs are also laid out, meaning that you've unwrapped it properly. If you don't do that, it's not going to work. There we go. They're both enveloping. Now, don't worry about the bottom here um, because what's happening is we're only trying to get the detail of the top. If we're doing the detail of both sides, um, I haven't really had to do that. Usually I'll do one side than the other, uh, but the cage just needs to go over the high poly mesh properly so it takes that detail fully without any errors and then projects it to the low poly and so the next step what you want to do for the low poly is use projection so i'm going to delete this real quick and show you how this is done go down to projection as you see right here under reference geometry um, there's a little white space pick and pick list and you want to make sure that what shows up here is the high poly so what i'm going to do and there's two ways of doing this so what i'm going to do first uh, is I'm going to show you how to do it by just clicking on here. So you do that, bam, done. Okay. Another method is to click on pick and you can go over here in the list. Either way, as long as that's popping up, you now know that the cage is going to reference the high poly uh, to burn that detail onto your low poly. You also want to come down here. By default, this will probably be closed. You want to open that up. Make sure this is clicked because that's probably not going to be on. Click that and then click on shaded. Next thing you want to do, and for a plane, as you can see, there's a little bit of a blue outline. That's the cage. Now for other uh, 3D models and stuff like that, you're going to have a lot more detail. So you're going to be able to see more of that um, than you would on this plane. But what you want to do is you want to make sure you push this out a bit. Now you can manually input it or you can just kind of click here and then roll up. Or roll down now as you can see how that's rising above it 
that's the cage and that's going to envelop the whole model i know it doesn't look like that but it is um well, since this is a uh a plane, you're not going to see it envelop it like you probably would with a different type of mesh that has more rounded surfaces and things like that. So usually I just kind of go to 0 0.2. And if for any reason you're having any issues and it's not doing its thing right, just go to reset. Okay. And you can just come back here. Do that. So now that that's going to envelop the low poly as well as the high poly, that's taken care of. And we want to go into under... Uh, render setup and so again I've already had this set up from before but I'm gonna go put this to the defaults so that you can see exactly how I had this set up alright so under this here you want to make sure the filter is at cat rom and a lot of people forget to do that and you could use max 2.5 star uh, once you enable global super sampler or you can use hammer slay the reason I use hammer slay is because this is kind of this part of the same setup I use for ambient occlusion bakes but also you can control the quality so I kind of set it up like this um, when it comes to the lighting you don't have to use this because it's already going to do its own light rays within the cage but if you're doing ambient occlusion you would go to light tracer so now that we have that set, you want to make sure target's production rendering mode and renderer is default scale line renderer. So now we got to go to render to texture. Now it's very important to keep these uh, keep these things in mind. So I'm going to turn this back to the default, what they usually shows up. So usually it's like this, okay? So since we do have a projection modifier, we go to projection, click enable. Now the next part here, this is where the unwrapping of your UVs for the low poly come into play. This will be default, and this is what you want to leave it at, and it's going to pick this up. Now if you had more than one channel, make sure it's on the same channel as the sub-objects. At least that's what I've learned in my experience. You mess around with these too much, it doesn't work. Use the same existing channel, okay, because that's going to be basically putting that on the channel with your mapped out UVs. So if you don't have that done right, that's exactly what I mean about it not working. So once that's set up, you want to make sure that, that, and I'll do this again just to show you, when you click add, go down to normals map. You want to make sure you set it to whatever resolution. We're going to do 1024 by 1024. Have target map slot bump. And then over here, we're going to make sure we have it in a place where we're going to remember it. So we're going to do demo normals. All right, so that's what I'll call that. Select that on my desktop, RGB 24 bit. Okay, so all that should be settled. Yep. And then we are going to click on render. Give it a second here, it's kind of freezing. Oh, I think 3ds Max had it. <laughs> All right, well, I had a little brain fart there. Uh, so we're gonna render. And that's going pretty quick, so I won't have to uh, speed up this part of the video. But again, when it's doing this, um, what you'd normally notice probably around here is it would turn red if there was any errors. And I know the first time I did this, I didn't do the cage right. All of this came up fine inside of this shape but out here was all red. So I had to make sure the cage is a little bit higher than it was and then it came out like this. Now don't let it freak you out if it doesn't look like it's a normal map as it's doing this because it's going to be a normal map when you look at the actual uh, picture that you've rendered out. This is just you know, showing you uh, the detail of the high poly. Now it's also good to see this. If you just see a solid color, then something's wrong. Even if it doesn't show like the default red as uh, red for the error uh, indicator, um, there still may be issues. So you want to kind of make sure that this pops up. So since this is a flat plane, it's pretty easy to see it. So it just went over, scanned it with the uh, light rays, and uh, that's what we did. So let me get to the the image real quick, as you can see over here. My icons are pretty small, so you can see the normal map has been done properly. Now let me point something out real quick. Uh, as you can see, since I did the sides here, you know, I smoothed them out, you can see that you're getting more information from that, especially with this, the half spheres, 
on the detail of the high poly. So that is one thing that it will pick up. So if you have a lot of straight drops, okay, um, and let's say like right at the edge of the sphere here would be kind of halfway through the sphere, this is popping up. So that's a straight drop right there to the middle here. That's what you're, you're gonna see. You're not gonna see a lot of detail there, but you will see a lot of detail in between it. Um, over here, obviously, and over here, it's just flat blue because there's really no curves or indents or any extra detail that the uh, normal map is going to pick up when it's being baked. So just keep that in mind. When you're making a model, a high poly model, you wanna make sure that there's a lot of curves and smooth indents, details. That's the whole point of it. So now we see that that's done properly. And go back into 3ds Max here. Close this, close this. And you're probably wondering, well, what happened? It's not showing up. This is what you have to do. Um, well, first off, let me make sure that that's actually selected. So under the, you know, realistic shaded edge faces uh, part of your viewport, you want to go down to materials and you want to make sure you pick realistic materials with maps. This will help you view normal maps in 3ds Max. So right now, um, it's not looking exactly right, but that's because sometimes 2016 has these graphical errors where even if you've done it right, uh, it's not popping up right. So what I, I did is I already set up the material within this here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this real quick and see if it works. There we go. All right. So what I also have attached to this is the ambient occlusion. So if I turn that off, as you can see, it's just for some reason um, in 3ds Max 2016, I noticed a lot of times there'll be graphical or visual errors. They may not be like artifacts or things like that, but some things will just not update or register and you'll have to save your project and reopen it or close it all together. Uh, so you may not have that issue, but if that does happen, that may be the reason. So as you can see in the flat surface here, the uh, model has the normal map um, created. Now, another cool thing is because um, it's been put into the target map slot uh, bump when we double click on this. We sort of like if you're opening up maps under the other material part over here, um, it will show it here on the side. And a lot of times this will be set to 30. Now, 60 is pretty good for me, but if I went up to like 100, um, the intensity may be too much. Okay, it may look good here, but it's actually, you know, way too high. So I put it to 60. And so that looks pretty good. You know, that will do the, the job that I'm looking for. But if you still feel that that's too high, you can always mess with this and make sure that that's uh, taken care of. Now, let me show you something real quick in this editor. Basically, all I did after I baked the AO is, uh, you know, I just put it into diffuse, um, the diffuse color. And what's happening is that it's working in tandem with the ambient occlusion and the normal map. So you have both of them you know, occurring at the same time. And so what I'm going to show you next is how to create the ambient occlusion map so that it works on a flat surface like this without having to actually have a 3D model with a bunch of details and then bake the shadows of the ambient occlusion on that, uh, which is normally the way that I did it. And um, it's also different from how a lot of people may do it as well as like there's different ways of baking an ambient occlusion. You could use mental ray or you can use the default scale line renderer. And that's the one that I prefer to do because it's the most accurate. So let me take off the low poly real quick. Well, you can see both of them, but um, as you can see a point of uh, what I was trying to make here, I'll take the already laid out UVs. Now what I did for normal ambient occlusion on models is that I would just lay out the UVs as you can see here, the black background and the white here. Um, and then I would just, you know, change the settings and render setup, which I'll show you in a second, make sure skylights out here and it would bake it directly on the model. So all I had to do was then take that texture, throw it on the model, bam, it's already done. But you're probably thinking, well, how do you project it onto another mesh? So for a plane, it works pretty well. Other uh, low poly meshes, because they are going to be different from the high poly, it may not work right. So you may have to just bake um, ambient occlusion on the low mesh anyways and do it the typical way uh, instead of doing a projection. But sometimes you can get away with using a projection. And usually on a flat plane or a model piece of a wall, that would be what you'd want to do. As you can see here, 
And let me uh, move it out of the way. So again, it's kind of doing that uh, a graphical issue where normally I had this set up where the intensity of the diffuse map is high enough. It's at 100, so it should be looking like this right now, but for some reason it isn't. But like again, if you have this version, just save it and reopen it, and it should take care of the problem. Uh, but that's basically it. So I already had it baked here. Normally it would look the same over here, uh, so don't let that fool you. And this would be the typical way that you do ambient inclusion. You'd bake it right on the model itself and the UVs and then just apply it. Um, and you could also take that map and use that in Photoshop. So let's say it's not dark enough and you have a diffuse map and a normal map and all that. Well, you can still use layers of the ambient occlusion using a multiply modifier in Photoshop on each layer to darken this. And what will happen is all the white background will disappear and it will only show the shadows. This way you could um, create a, a better ambient occlusion or a darker or lighter one depending on what you're aiming for. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go back. All right, so this way that's taken care of. I'm go to the high poly and I'm gonna take a white color. And the reason I say this is because this is probably the best way to see the ambient occlusion actually appear on your model. I'm also going to do it to the high poly to make sure. All right, so they're both taken care of. And again, we have the projection already set up. So the same way that you had set up on normals, this is why I'll do my normal at first and then I'll do the AO uh, projection right after that. So it's already set up the way I had it before. There's no need to mess around with it. And the only thing we really got to mess with is uh, putting in a skylight under standard and put that out here escape so that you're not clicking and putting a bunch of them you want to make sure you only have one click on the low poly or do it on the list to make sure and you want to go under uh, render setup once more and so the the difference here is instead of having the filter to cap more ROM we're going to do area and you can keep it to hammer slay. I've done it before with max 2.5 star, but I think it didn't look as good or there was a problem with it. That's just me. I could be totally off on that. You can give it a shot, uh, but I usually leave it this setting. Um, so then you go under advanced lighting and you go to light tracer. Okay, now this is where you could also change some settings to make the ambient occlusion, you know, more sharp, have it darker or lighter, depending on the bounces. I, I'm not exactly totally sure what each one does right at the top of my head. I'll have to reference it, but I do believe a global multiplier that will definitely make an impact, as well as the amounts of rays per sample. Uh, so I usually put this up to 300. You don't want to go too high, otherwise you're going to be waiting forever. Uh, so the, for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just put it 300. And then again, we're going to go under render to texture. Again, want to make sure uh, that this is enabled. You know, you already have your UVs laid out, so that's the same. And you want to make sure that this time, instead of normals map, that you add a complete map. And so you also want to make sure you have this set first and then go down here. Go to demo AO, that's what I'm just going to call that. I change it to BMP again so I can see it on the desktop. All right, that's all set, and uh, let's give this a shot. So, you may not be able to, see, yeah, okay, you'll be able to see it now. Um, since I put a white material on there, you'll be able to see where the uh, white line as it scans is moving towards. Now, what you're going to see. Um, once it gets towards the shape, uh, instead of it doing the normal kind of look, you're going to see the ambient occlusion appear as it scans on it. So uh, just for the sake of uh, some knowledge here while we're waiting, um, I learned how to do this basically looking up tutorials, things like that, but trial and error. And that's really one of the ways that you're going to learn a lot of things. Uh, so don't be afraid to fail. That's one of the greatest teachers you're ever going to have next to people who are professionals or people that have gone through this. And with their trial and error, they're able to teach other people as I'm teaching you now. Um, but it's just a matter of setting things up properly, planning ahead. And once you learn each step, 
and teach yourself, you'll, you'll know exactly what to do. It would be like second nature. Um, so what a lot of people may use to do ambient occlusion uh, maps, they might use uh, NVIDIA Mental Ray. Um, that works, but I found that that doesn't look as nice and crisp as using the scanline renderer. And I'm not sure if you can really project using that setting. Uh, so what I usually do is what I'm showing you now, uh, and it works best for me with my workflow because a lot of the settings are almost exactly the same from when you're baking a normal map outside of changing uh, light tracer and the filter uh, for the light settings. And like I said, you know, you could use Max 2.5 Star or Hammer Slay, but I choose Hammer Slay because I'd be able to change the quality uh, to the right of that setting. So as you can see ahead of you here, um, it's picking up the ambient occlusion just the way I want it to. Um, so if you mess around with like, you know, the rays per sample, global multiplier, things like that, you're going to be able to get a different ambient occlusion uh, result. So you might want to mess around with those. I'd probably look those up to make sure you know what you're messing with. But those are really the only settings that I mess with if for some reason the bake doesn't look perfect. Because even though I can take this and layer this onto a texture in Photoshop, it's still going to have the set look to it. The shadows will still look the same way. Uh, so you may want to change it so that you have less shadows or you have more shadows. So obviously a darker environment, um, you're going to want more ambient occlusion and more of an architectural environment of a bright room or something like that. You want a little less, but you want them to have a lot of soft shadows. So that's basically what I would advised to everybody if they're going to start baking ambient occlusion. Now again, uh, this isn't really a tutorial about that, but I would figure I'd share this information. Um, I will be making a separate video just for ambient occlusion baking, so it'll be showing you this technique as well as the NVIDIA mental ray, so you can see for yourself which one is the better choice. I believe that this has finished. All right. So as you can see on the model here, um, we have it baked onto the low poly. And I can take the high poly off just in case. So there you go. You got the ambient occlusion projected on a low poly model that normally you would not be able to get this result on in a flat plane. Um, now what I'm going to show you, again, is how to create the normal map or at least how to render the normal map with the ambient occlusion at the same time. I usually go down to this right here. Um, go up here. And I'll, I'll even show you how to do a height map real quick because that's something else. That's another uh, a bake that you might want to know how to do. It doesn't really have anything to do with uh, these two and it's not going to show up. But if you want to just create one, um, I'll show you the settings that you have to use to do so. So as you can see here, I have this bitmap connected to Diffuse. So let's say that you know we're starting off from scratch here. The way to do it, drag this out, go to bitmap. And I'll show you how to do this one too real quick so you know what to do. And obviously, I have this already set up. But I'll go to the one that we just created. OK, bring it over. A lot of this is kind of like Unreal Engine 4 in a way, so it's, it shouldn't be too too different um, in a sense of connecting nodes. So here's the normal map, right? So let's say that I wanted to show you this from scratch. Same thing. You already have a standard material. Bring out the bump. And instead of going right to bitmap, you want to go to normal bump first. And there's a reason for that. So when we come out here and do this, that's when we go to bitmap. And then we're going to go to the normal map that we baked out. I believe this is. There you go. And that's that's really all I did. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is when you have this selected, as you can see over here, these will be the details um, for both of them that are connected in here. But by default, this is at 30. And this isn't really strong enough to show you the normal map working uh, in tandem. You can see it a little bit. Oh, actually, no, you can't because I actually have to drag this over. Um, do this. So you drag this node like this, bring it out here. Bam, right? So you can see it a little bit, but it's not too strong, right? Uh, if it's not strong enough for you, just bring this up a bit. Sometimes people go right to 100, but if I went to 100, look at that. It looks like it looks good, but it's actually way too strong because you're going to see a lot of these shadows and things 
on certain parts of it and it just doesn't look good. So I bring it down to 60 and that looks closest to the original model um, that I can actually uh, throw at you. So in a second I'll show you, like I, I hooked this up to see what it would do just as is, it's not going to show anything, but I'm guessing if you set up your render properly, like if you just go up here and you're just doing render and you're doing a still image, I think if you set it up just right and you hook this into the displacement, then the plane itself would probably start popping up within that render. Sort of a camera trick and it's sort of like what they would do in like Skyrim for walls. Um, if you have like post-processing volumes, instead of it having to be a 3D uh, object, it will just pull up certain areas with the height map data to create an illusion of uh, extra polygons creating height. So we'll just close that for now. And that's all set. Let me get the high poly here. We'll bring this out. All right, and I'm just going to go into the material editor where I had the ambient inclusion bake for the high poly. So here we are. As you saw that change real quickly, I clicked off of it. Sometimes it doesn't do that. It's just a graphical issue I've noticed in this uh, program. So pretty close with the ambient inclusion and the normal map, okay? So that's, that's very close actually. And that's really how you do that. So if you're looking for a way to create details on a low poly, like a plane or a piece of wall from a high poly, that's what you do. And you just want to keep in mind again that you have the low poly unwrapped properly. You have enough smooth edges on your high poly so that the normal will be picked up. And again, for the ambient occlusion, same thing. You want to make sure that uh, this has been unwrapped so that this will project on it properly. Um, and it is a little different than just doing it on the high poly. Now, when I did this, I had to unwrap this differently. It wasn't just a plane. It wasn't already done for you. Um, so I had to unwrap it and then bake it in there. Okay, so that way when I dragged it back on there, if I brought it into a game engine, it would look proper. It wouldn't be like shadows are over here, pieces are over here. It doesn't look right. So now that that's done, let me show you real quick how you uh, how you would do a height map. Is that is something that a few people have asked me. And since we're on the subject of these, you might as well get it out of the way. All right. Yep. And I think I left the skylight in there. Yeah, I did last time. All right, so um, I left their projection all the same settings as I did before. Uh, this may or may not have an effect, um, but this is how I did it before. So we're gonna go under to render to texture. I know it's already open, but I'm gonna pop up here. All the same settings, and instead of it being complete map, all you're doing is a height map, and that's it. And the reason I say do projection is because, like I said, with the way we did it with the other two, it's going to be the same process and it's going to appear on the plane uh, the same way. If you just wanted to hook it up and see the height map, you'd probably just hook it into Diffuse just to see it uh, on the flat plane in 3ds Max, but that is actually supposed to be a displacement map. So again, if you set it up for a different type of render in 3ds Max, um, the displacement map is what would create the illusion of 3D uh, geometry. So we'll just add elements again. Demo height map. Again, I always make sure it's BMP. You don't have to, but I do that for personal preference. It also has a lot of colors in there, so it looks a little better too when you want to edit with it in Photoshop. Um, you could always change the optimization of that texture before you bring it into the game engine. We got all that set. All right, so this is what we're going to do. And I'll pretty much just speed this up, or at least I'll just you know cut this part out of the video. Uh, because it's not really going to matter. It's just going to show the same thing as it did before. All right, so we're done baking the height map. And like I said before, it's just going to look the same as it did the uh, ambient occlusion bake. So what we're going to do right now for the sake of the tutorial, so we're going to go over to the, here it is. I'll just show it to you in the photo viewer because this is what it's going to look like. So here it is. Um, now, if you want to see how it's, it will look on the low mesh or low poly mesh, I'll show that to you. But as you can see, the, the deeper the detail of the model inside will be darker and the higher uh, the lighter. So anything from black to white, depending on the height, this will pop up. 
Uh, so since we know that worked, we're going to go to 3ds Max here. And what I'll do is I'll just use a typical material editor and right here I'll uh, open the height map. Well, let's go to the one that we actually baked. I know I did a few. Yep, that is the one we baked. All right. And so that's pretty much it. Now you can, like I said, if you go under details of the uh, default map, you know, it should be 100% anyways on the default. Yeah. So sometimes when you click off and click back, see, it could just easily be that I had it clicked on and the projection was still there. Um, I have to take that off. So there you go. That's the height map. And I mean, yeah, you can, you know, this is mainly just for data for a uh, 3D rendering program to pick up. So if you do want to create the illusion of 3D geometry, and this is, if you ever seen like substance uh, materials on a sphere and you see how they pop out, I believe what they do, instead of actually having a 3D model of a sphere with all that detail, they set it up in the render like uh, Marmoset uh, tool bag or other renders like that. They set it up so where it's reading the data from the height map and so that it pops it out with the material that it actually has created from it applied. So it looks like they perfectly detailed a 3D model when in, instead I believe they just use the height map data to create the illusion of it popping out over the sphere. So if you ever see that, that's pretty much how they do it. But uh, yeah, oh, another thing real quick. Um, if I haven't already shown you, let me get to the, probably did, but if I didn't, um, as you can see, you know, you got all the different colors showing up here. So if you're not sure if your normal map baked properly, just go and open it up and take a look. If it's all blue, it didn't work. If there's, you know, kind of has this a little bit, but it's not as much detail as you think you should expect. Maybe the settings need to be changed. Maybe there's something with the high poly or the cage is not working properly to give you the proper result. So just keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, that's basically how you do it. I uh, hope you guys learned something. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask me, hit that like button, subscribe, uh, share it around. As we all know, YouTube has changed their algorithms. So you're not gonna see my videos in your feed unless I'm doing stuff every single day and I'm getting more popular, it's just the way it is. So the best way to kind of get my videos out there um, just share them. Um, and again, I'm open to creating tutorials for people. I will be setting up a website uh, sometime soon here and be doing personal tutorials as well as one-on-one -on -one teaching for people who want to learn. Um, I know a, <laughs> a lot for what I've gained on my own. Uh, I do have nine certifications and many different programs like Cinema 4D, Maya, 3ds Max, Blender, you know, Unity, Unreal Engine, things like that, Sony Vegas, Photoshop. Um, but the majority of my knowledge is self-taught and trial and error. Uh, I'm not a professional by any means, but I do know enough where it will save you years of time looking elsewhere to try to get the same knowledge on your own. So if you're interested, let me know. Um, again, I also have a BitChute channel. Uh, if you look on my banner on YouTube, you can click on the bottom right corner. You can go there just in case anything ever happens where my channel is deleted or it's you know you just can't find any new videos in your feed always go there to check because basically what it does it's going to mirror anything that i've uploaded and it'll instantly show you the video over there so again thank you for uh taking a look i uh, hope you learned a lot and i will catch you guys later on